Hello. So we already looked at um, the type of plants that you can grow on the system. What are the best plants for your aquaponic system? And we've been able to zero down on a few plants. We tried discussing the heavy feeders and differentiating them from the light feeders. We talked about density and the rest. However, for the sake of those people that are thinking, okay, they want to go commercial, they want to go commercial, there are a few tips that will probably help you in picking or in um, increasing your profitability. So one of that would be one, in the construction of your screen house, you probably want to start first with a bamboo screen house, something cheap that would not be too much on your budget. That would help a lot. That's one. So another thing that you could actually do also is to um, another thing that you can actually do is to get what we call ground cover. So by ground cover, what we mean is have um, a soil cover that is specifically designed to help you cover your soil such that you don't have to weed regularly. So when I'm saying soil cover, I'm not talking about the aquaponic system itself, but the surrounding of your aquaponic system. For most people, what they try to do is cement the environment. That might be really um, not cost effective. So what you can simply do is use soil cover all around. So with your soil cover, you don't have to worry about weeding. Much more than that, um, the pathogens and whatever it is that is under the soil has no way of coming out to affecting your plants or your fishes. Then in addition, if you don't want to just do soil cover covering everywhere, you can plant herbs around. So that a little bit of your effluent you can use for the herbs or you can plant what you call um, ornamental grasses, grasses that, or economic grasses. Ornamental grasses are grasses that people are, are willing to pay for, to use for the decoration of their houses. That would also help. Or economic grasses, grasses that people are willing to buy to use to feed their livestock. That is also another option. Or grow flowers around. If you can, grow exotic flowers like the ones people use for wedding, burial ceremony and the rest. That would also give you money instead of just having the space wasted. Okay. Now, having said that, for those of us watching among, for the students of in Nigeria, I have been able to say, um, do a market analysis for you to pick the most profitable crops that you can grow in Nigeria. For those of you watching from the US, the UK and the Netherlands, these crops may not apply to you. So this is meant for the Nigeria market. So in Nigeria, our premium crops are things like arugula, we have basil, we have brussel, we have chives, cilantro, cucumber, dill, lemongrass, kale, lettuce, parsley, Swiss chard, bell pepper, we have potatoes, the Irish potatoes. Again, for, potato, for Irish potato, let me also quickly say that I realized from down south, people are willing to pay top money for Irish potato, but when you go to like just where they produce it, it's like, I mean, it's available. Then squash, we have cherry tomatoes, then you have this, your large Roma and then beef stick tomatoes, then you have pumpkin, eggplant, koi, antichoke, bean, berg, broccoli, etc. So these are most of the crops I realized people are willing to pay top-notch money for. People are generally willing to pay top-notch cash for to say, okay, yes, you want this X, Y, Z crop. The other thing, again, that you should also put in mind is your timing of your planting. You want to ensure that you time your planting season properly. You want to ensure that your plants hit the system when you have enough nitrate on the system. Number two, you want to ensure that your harvest coincides with when the market would need the produce. If you are living in areas where you have um, what you call this five five days market structure, and you have to, you know, you are taking your goods to the market to sell. You don't want to have your vegetables ready, maybe four days to market days. You probably want them ready a day or two to the market day. So these are some of the things you should take note of. Then you should also ensure you have home support. So by home support, I'm not saying just your family members. I'm saying 
in your farm, you should have one or two people you know you can depend on. As much as you can automate the system, you still need a human intervention. People you know you can call up if there is something wrong or if you are unable to go to the farm yourself that you know, oh, they can help you do a thing or two and you can trust they will do what they said they would do. Okay, so in summary, for profitability, understand your production, your productivity, understand the market. By understanding the market, understand the value the market places on the goods. Like an example, I gave an example earlier where we talked about um, water leaf and parsley. So if you are growing water leaf in one village, in for, uh, maybe in the village, now if that village has already so much water leaf growing naturally, the market will not place so much value on your water leaf. But if you are growing that water leaf in probably a place like um, um, Sokoto where they don't even have enough water and water leaf is probably scarce, then the value placed on it might be higher. So it is not the crop itself that is bad, but it's how, how does the market respond to what you are growing. Then also try to make estimated demand. Don't just grow because you have the space. Understand how much demand am I going to have for this crop? How many people are willing to buy this thing? If 10 people are willing to buy a hundred gram, don't produce exactly hundred gram, produce slightly below so that you know you whatever you are producing you are not going to have wasted. Then take your time to understand your capital requirements. Understand what you need. Have a complete capital outlay. Now, don't make the mistake of doing capital outlay for the running of the farm alone. Put in salaries, build in salaries. If that is the only thing you are doing, I also advise people build in your own salary too. So that when you are raising capital, you know the capital covers everything you want to do. Then, also your personal zeal, of course, is always very important because you don't want to run out of steam and forget your farm. This is agriculture, it's not plug and play. It's not like you start today and tomorrow you are harvesting. It takes time. In that time, you have to stick it up your zeal, your passion to ensure you get the best out of the farm. Now, having said that, for your plants also, I know people would probably be wondering, what if you have pest infestation and all of that, what can you do? Since you don't want to use any chemical, well, what you can do is do what you call organic pesticides. So we have organic pesticides that you can use. And the good news about these organic pesticides is you can actually um, make them at home. So what you need is for a small, so you can also do the multiplication factor yourself. So three hot chili pepper, three hot green pepper, hot chili pepper or regular green pepper. Just three of that. Then you need two to three um, bulbs, not onion bulbs, bulbs of garlic. So get your garlic, about three to three bulbs of garlic. Then pour three cups of water. So we have your green pepper, three. We have your two to three bulbs of garlic. Then you have your cup of water. Blend all of these things together. Blend all of these things together. Then leave to stand for about 24 hours. Leave to stand for about 24 hours and you can spray this on your plant. This is natural organic pesticide for your plants and your things like your mini bugs. Most of the um, insects that affect plants, this can take care of. You don't want to use this, you can also use your neem cake. You can also use your neem oil and all of that. For those of you that want to get neem oil, go on Instagram. Search for Kinzo Farms. You can search for Kinzo Farms on Instagram. You'll be able to get your um, organic neem oil from them that you can use as your pesticide and all of that. Okay, so I won't discuss all of these. Let's go to today's class, which is on fish choosing your fish now before i discuss fish let me just say this i am not an expert on fish so i'm just giving you a general overview but if you want to understand fishes in detail you can also go and check kings of farms you can discuss with him or you can check akin fish 
you can check Akin Fish. Either of them can give you everything you need to know about fish rearing and all of that. So if you are just starting, you need to understand fishes particularly and understand plants. So Akin Fish, Akin Fish is based in the southwestern region, though he travels around Nigeria a lot. Kinzo Farms is based in the northern part of the country, but also travels extensively. And the good news is they are very nice guys. I mean, they are very affordable. They are willing to teach and share knowledge just for a token fee, not much. They are very nice guys. Okay. So uh, basically, your fishes have different stages. You have the egg stage, the larva stage, the fry stage, fingerling, juvenile, adult, then the spawning adult stage. These are things that they can teach you generally. Now, in choosing your fish, basically there are two broad parts. Are you growing fish for consumption or are you growing fishes or rearing fishes for ornamental purpose? Like I always tell uh, my white friends, I tell them, I don't think I have met a Nigerian that is rearing fish just for the function of ornamental. I mean, I don't know, but I doubt there is any. I mean, I think we all grow for commercial purpose. Then, there are fishes that are best suited for aquaponics. So you need to know the fishes you want to pick. For example, tilapia fish, your bluegill fish, your crappie, your sunfish, your koi fish, your catfish. These are good for aquaponics. So for those of you that want to do ornamental, you are looking at things like your goldfish, your tetras, your swordfish, your angel fish, and your mollies. All of these are also very good. Then other ones that are also the level two good, not 100% but level two good for aquaponics. You have this like um, carp, your bar baramuda, your silver and golden perch, and so on and so forth. However, in Nigeria, I know that the most um, reared or raised fishes in aquaculture are catfishes. Then closely followed by your um, tilapia. I think those are the two basic ones they run in Nigeria. And your catfishes generally are ready for the market between five after between five to ten months. So if you want to go for catfish, put in mind that you are not going to harvest and start selling until the fifth or sixth month. So you should have enough money to run their feed and all of that. Two, you know your catfish are fishes that love warm climates. So if you are probably living in a place like Jaws and you are thinking of doing catfish, then you have to start thinking of having a heater for your system because of the fact that your weather can really get cold. Then another advantage of for people, why people actually choose catfishes is because they are highly resistant to diseases. They are highly resistant to diseases and they are able to, they are also, they are able to also survive even in water of low um, dissolved oxygen. So that is also another thing. Then they have high market value. I mean, if you've ever been to a point and kill center in Nigeria, you understand that catfish is a complete economy of its own. Then for reproduction, they lay about 3,000 to 4,000 eggs at a go, which is also very, very awesome. Again, like I said, for your fishes, see Kinzo Farms and Akin Fish to get more details about that. But generally, you want to feed your fishes two to three times a day. Then you also want to ensure, like we said before, you don't want to feed your fish more than what they can finish in five to ten minutes. So when you are feeding your fish, give them what the amount of feed they can finish between five to ten minutes. And after ten minutes, whatever they do not eat, take it away from the fish pond. Then um, generally fish eat between 1.2 to 2% of their body weight. People always ask, how do I measure the weight? How do I get the weight of my fish? Get your big bowl measure the uh, put water in the bowl weigh now when you weigh you get the weight of your bowl and your water then throw your fish inside once you throw your fish inside again weigh when you weigh you can now subtract the weight of what you got as a summary from what you got initially the difference will give you so what i'm saying is so what you have is so what we are trying to explain is first weigh your bowl plus water then weigh bowl water and fish so whatever you get here let's say the first thing you weighed was 
y or was b a and what you weighed here was b so when you do b minus a what you're not going to get is the weight weight of the fish so you know once you know the weight of your fish is typically they take between 1.2 to 2 percent of their weight per time if you want to have an idea but this would not be easy if you have so many fishes in your pond then um, you also need to understand that if the temperature of your water is too high or too low or the fishes are stressed they generally will not eat as much as they should then also remember the fact that for most fishes they also want to be friendly then please take note for those of you that want to do cat fish you don't want your bigger fishes with your smaller fishes if not you have just given them lunch for free they will eat up the younger ones then another thing again for those of you that want to rear fishes, there are different diseases that could affect fishes from bacteria to fungi to parasites and some physical lesion that can also affect fishes. Then uh, some of the things to note to know whether your fishes are being affected, we'll discuss that in the next session.